All right, so welcome to tonight's uh, lecture. This is, of course, supposed to be lecture 11, not even 9. And uh, we're doing uh, a practical tonight. So the first thing that we'll start, uh, we'll dis we'll start uh, discussing is um, the parts of the window screen. So a window screen, um, it contains a desktop. So a desktop is, uh, is, is the on-screen work area on which, the, on which windows, icons, menus, and dialog boxes uh, appear. So the desktop can have several components or, I mean, or parts in short. So parts of the desktop include icons and the taskbar. So let us look at these icons and the taskbar. So I'm sure you are able to see the desktop here. So all these things you are seeing here are called icons. All these um, things you are seeing here, they are called icons. And then the taskbar is simply just what you are seeing down here. So like I said, tonight we're just doing a practical. So I'll just show you the practical training, what they meant about the practical training and whatever that is involved there. So whatever you are seeing here are uh, called icons. Okay, these are icons, say WhatsApp icon. Yeah, this is a folder, of course. It's also an icon that is just able to show uh, folders. You have all these are, they are, they are icons and then what you're seeing down here is called um, is called a task bar. So the whole part here, the whole, the, the whole screen that you're seeing here is the one that we call the desktop. Okay. So let's quickly move on. So icon is a small image that represents a file or folder or a program. So like I said, an icon is simply just a small image that is representing a file a folder or an application in short. So this is a folder, this is an example of a folder that we are seeing here. Yeah, so I know most of you know about this, but I'm just going to show you some of the things that you need to know about a folder and maybe probably some of the shortcuts that you need to know. So I've just been following the, the, is the, the handout bit by bit. That's why I'm also taking time to explain this. All right, so, that is what we call an icon. So when you just install an operating system, there are about four to five icons that are always on the desktop. And that is, um, you normally have the recycle bin. So when you just install the operating system, you are, you are going to have the recycle bin. This one will always be there. Now, apart from that, you also have the, the computer uh the my computer icon the my computer icon should also not miss let me check if i had saved one okay so this is the part i was talking about so you are going to have the recycle bin the recycle bin will always be there immediately after installing the the operating system and then apart from that you also have the my computer in uh, in windows 10 it's called my pc and then you also have the document shortcut. So this, this is also the, um, important. And then you also have the network shortcut. The network shortcut is also there to help you connect with other devices. Okay. So that is exactly what we mean by having four to five uh, icons when you just install the system. That's why they are called, uh, that's why they say by default, uh, there will be four to five icons on the desktop when you just install your system. And then there's also what is called the two tip. So the two tip, yeah, there's also what is called the two tip. So the two tip is uh, normally, or rather it appears when you just uh, put, um, you just put the cursor on any of the icon. So for instance, if I put the cursor on, uh, on the zoom icon here, you find something that will appear like this. Okay, on the music icon here, when you put the cursor, it stays there for some seconds on the music icon. So what has appeared here is the one that we were calling the uh, the the two what's this? The one that we are calling the two tip. Uh, yeah. So what you are seeing here, what I've just drawn here is the one that we are calling the two tip. Yeah. So it's also very important to know that. Yeah, so tonight's lesson is not going to be a very long lesson. We're just going through the practical 
uh, part of the handout, which is just a short uh, session, which is just a short uh, thing. So the two tip is simply just what I'm just from showing you here. This is the two tip. And then when you talk about the desktop for those uh, that have just recently joined us, it's simply just the whole screen here, what you're seeing here, it's called the desktop. And then all these that have circled here, the ones that we call the icons. And then the, the down part, which I've just um, highlighted down here in red, this one is called the task bar. It's called the task bar. Okay. So these are the five. Um, these are the five uh, applications that are usually found when you just install the, the the operating system. Yeah. So we have the my computer folder there. You have my documents folder. Then you have the Internet Explorer folder. You have the recycle bin, the network neighborhood and then the task bar is also there. So these are the ones that I just say code here. So they are also very important. Let us now look at the windows, yeah. We look at the anatomy of the window or before we go to that, we can look at the task bar first. So the task bar is simply just what you are seeing down here. This uh, part you are seeing down is called the task bar. So it consists of uh, the, the assistant applications that are running and some of them you can just pin them there. Even if they are not running, you can just have them there pinned. And then you can also see there is a network um, icon there which is showing you how strong the network is. Then you have everything there. Uh, I mean, uh, some of the programs that are uh, running also in the background can also be shown, rather they are also shown in the taskbar. Okay, so let us look at the windows. So when you look at the windows, the windows consists of the two bar. So the two, um, rather the title bar, it consists of the title bar. Then apart from the title bar, or rather the title bar, which um, which we cons which we, which is going to have the maximize uh, option there and minimizing option and also the restore option. So the title bar is simply just uh, this uh, part you are seeing here. So the title bar is simply just this part you are seeing here. It consists of the uh, move size, ma minimize, maximize, and the close um, uh, options there which are also present there. You have the minimize, maximize, and then the close um, uh, buttons there. So this is, um, these are also features of the window. So whatever you are seeing here is the one that we call the window. Yeah, it's the one that we call the window, it's the one that we recently just discussed in the previous slide. Yeah, so the window consists of the menu bar, the two bar, the scroll bar, the status bar. So the status bar is simply, is, is normally found down here if you have Windows 7. So the status bar is usually down here. And then you have the scroll bar. So the scroll bar is found mostly here on this part. It's just that uh, I don't have a lot of things here. So if you have uh, something like, um, a lot of maybe uh, files in a folder. You you something is something uh, which is like this will, will appear on this side, which will enable you to be scrolling down or up. Yeah, and then this is um, and then you have the other part which is just um, the 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 two bar. So the two bar is also found on top here. Just that this is not Windows 7, but Windows 7, I would have shown you everything uh, properly. But the two bar is normally found here in most cases. Normally found here on this part. Let me check if I screenshotted one. Okay, this one is uh, at least important. I mean, it's uh, at least showing a lot of things. So you have the address bar, which is just part here, which is just um, this part here. Then you have, um, these are the ones that I was saying you have the two bar. So the two bar is the one that consists of all the twos here. This is what you are seeing here. This is called the two bar. And then you have the 
this the, the scroll bar is not shown, but it's supposed to be somewhere here. Then on the same window, you can have the search box, which is just there. And then the other important thing that um, that is uh, there is the navigation pan, which is just here. So this one will help you to navigate through uh, the whole computer. Just anything that you'd want to find in the computer is found here. You can find, you, you can find everything that is in the computer just on this uh, navigation uh, uh, pan. Okay, so let's also look at another important thing, which is just booting of the windows. So when the computer is switched on, the BIOS is activated. So remember what we discussed in the previous lesson, when you're booting a computer, the BIOS is first activated, and then you have, um, yeah, the, the BIOS is, is first activated. This BIOS is installed in the RAM chips of the computer. So that's why you discover that every time you remove a RAM out of a computer and you try to switch it on, the computer will not show anything to, to, to bring a black screen. So the first thing that the computer will do is it's going to search for a system called the BIOS in the OSIS in the RAM. So once, um, once there's no RAM in the computer, the system will not switch, uh, rather the computer will not switch on. And then if there is a BIOS, in the, if, there, if there is a BIOS uh, software or application in the RAM, or if you have a RAM which is working in the computer, if the computer finds that there's a system there called the BIOS in the RAM, it will go straight to now uh, begin to search for the operating system now that is in the hard drive. Then if there is no system, it will automatically show you to say, uh, your computer has no system or install an operating system or there is no um, bootable system in your computer. That's what it, uh, those are the, uh, the, what is the statements that, it, that it's going to show you. But if there's a system, it will quickly, um, it will quickly begin to load that system and put and organize all the files and begin, uh, and begin to do assist to run on the system. Yeah, so the BIOS present in ROM, uh, the, the BIOS present in the ROM searches for, uh, in the ROM searches for the operating system and the drives. So if there is no operating system, it uh, shows non-system or uh, disk error. So it's going to tell you that there's no system or disk error. So I've uh, explained this. So if the system is present, then, then it transfers the OS to the ROM, from the ROM to the RAM. So when the system is present in the ROM, it, uh, it, will, it will now uh, transfer that system from the ROM to the RAM where it's going to be read um, temporarily. Yeah. So we know that the RAM just keeps information temporary. It doesn't keep uh, information permanently. So then the desktop is displayed on the monitor. Yeah, so I explained this. So there's a system in the room. Uh, if there's a system in the room, that's when the system now will be loaded and uh, to power on the monitor and everything will be displayed on the monitor. And then you continue using the system. Yeah, so the most important part when they ask you to explain how, you, how the computer is booted is simply just you telling them to say, there is um, a system that is found in the ROM um, that is called the, the OSIS, the BIOS. And then that BIOS uh, is the one that uh, will help you access or rather to work uh, with the computer, even without having a system in the computer. But if there is a system in the ROM that you, ha that, that you have or in the hard drive, if, you, if, there's, if there's a system, that's when, the computer will do as is will power on. It, it's going to transfer the operating system from the ROM to the RAM, where it's going to be stored uh, for temporary. It's going to be stored for temporary use. Yeah, and then from there, the desktop is displayed on the monitor. Yeah. Okay. So when you talk about the Windows Explorer, so the Windows Explorer is just an ex uh, an application that provides. Uh, detailed information about your files, folders, and uh, drives. So you can use it to see how 
your files are organized and uh, and to copy, move, and re rename files. So, I mean, as well as uh, to perform other tasks pertaining uh, to files, folders, and drives. So the Windows Explorer is just simply what you are seeing here. So this is, um, yeah, so this is, uh, one of the most important part of uh, computers. Windows 7 will bring a different part. Windows 10 will bring a different part. Uh, Windows XP will also give you a different um, way in which it appears. So this one will give you a list of applications that have been installed in the computer on this tray here. And then it will also enable you to have the option of switching off the computer there. Then you have settings there. In short, it will give you um, a quick access to almost everything in your computer. Then if you have any other things like the calendars, uh, the weather, the weather, you have games on, on, your, on your PC, you have pictures, they'll all be displayed here. So in short, it will give you almost everything that you have in the computer on just one tray. Yeah, so it's just like a quick access button. So before we go to the to 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 us is to before we go to the to I mean before we conclude the lesson there's also another part which is uh, very important which I saw uh, which you which I saw which is just uh, how to create a folder how to rename how to copy how to paste and how to do all those things so let me just share any of my um, windows and then we do everything together. Okay, so I hope you are able to see the windows here. I hope, I hope you are able to see the windows here. So if you've been told to, to create a new folder, if you have been told to create a new folder, you simply just enter any of, um, any of your OSIS, your files. You go on my computer and then you enter into any files or where, I, where wherever I want to create a folder. So if I go into that folder, so the first thing that I would do is to right click on the mouse. When I right click, there's uh, an option for me to create anything that I want as long as it's, it's supposed to be new. So I'll go there, where it's written new, and then you can see there's this option of a folder, shortcut, Microsoft Access, Microsoft PowerPoint and everything, as long as it's a new uh, file that I want to create. So if it's creating a folder, I'll click there and I'll write, I'll rename the, uh, I'll name the folder uh, using anything that I want to put there. So I can put maybe, uh, I can write it as maybe my file, if that's what I want to name the folder, my files. So that is how you just create a folder. It's just as simple as that. For Windows 7, there is a shortcut that you use. It's normally in the ribbon here on the two, um, on, on, the, on the twos, um, uh, what's this? Yeah, on the two kit here, on the two ribbon on top, just here on top. That's where you can find a shortcut for Windows 7. But this is Windows 10, so it's not there. So the only option that you can use, you just right click there and then you come on new and then create a new folder. Then if you want to re, uh, rename a folder, you simply just go on that same folder. Then you right click on your mouse and then go down there, you find rename. And then the shortcut for renaming uh, a folder is simply just F2 on every computer that you go there. You, when you just click on any folder and then you click F2, when you click F2, it will simply just bring the option for renaming and then you can write anything through, I mean, anything on that uh, folder. Yeah, so that's what it means. I've just forgotten, but there's also a shortcut of you cre creating a new folder. Yeah, I got it from Windows 7, but it also applies in Windows 10. So that is exactly what you are supposed to know. Then if you want to copy files, you want to copy files, you simply enter any um, any folder. Then you, you right click on the file that you want to copy. Let's say I want to copy this one. I'll right click there and then I'll go on the copy option there. And then 
I'll go back to the folder where I want to put this. I'll go into my files, then right click, and then there's a paste option there. So we're going to uh, paste that file there. Then it will come. That's what it means by copying. Then if you want to move, you can also do the same. If you want to move, you can also do the same. You right click on the file that you want to move. After right clicking there, you go on the option that is cut. So some, some computers will show move and uh, most of them will show cut. Yeah, but the old, old computers will show you move, but uh, most of the modern computers will show you cut. So you go on cut and you go on cut there, you go to the folder where you want to put it and then you click, you right click and then you paste there. So that's how you move and cut the folders. All right, thank you very much for attending tonight's lesson. So what you shouldn't forget is that there is an exercise at the end of uh, this slide. Make sure that you attempt this exercise. Yeah, so make sure that you attempt this exercise and send the solutions over. So mostly what they do for, my, for most of the online lessons, I don't know about your university, but in most cases, that's what happens. If they give you these, these activities, and then if they give you these activities and other exercises and most of the, uh, uh, the tests, the assignments more especially, for them to test that you answered this assignment on your own, what they'll do is that they'll bring the same questions in the exam and they'll see if at all you are going to answer uh, the same things that you wrote in your assignment. So make sure that whenever I give you an exercise, do it on your own, because most of the questions I, uh, that I put in exercises, they are usually gotten from your handouts. And some of them are examples, some of them are activities in your handouts. All right, so I don't know, is the exam that you are going to write going to be online or offline? Anyone, let, let anyone just mute themselves to tell me, is it going to be online or it's going to be offline? Uh, we we are not very sure. We'll see whether the the the, the what's this the corona cases will reduce. Uh, we'll do it physical. But if the cases will be high, then it will be online. Oh, all right. So yeah. So we're not very sure whether it will be online or what. It will depend on the cases of. Corona. All right. Okay. That's good then. All right. Thank you very much. Let's meet in the next lesson that we're going to have. And of course, I'm also sending an exercise for mathematics to test you to see whether you understood what we learned. So thank you very, very much for attending tonight's lesson. See you in the next lecture.